Should you get a male or female Rhodesian Ridgeback? It's one of the most common questions I get from prospective owners who want to make the quote, right choice. Of course, there is no straightforward answer. But today, I hope to offer a somewhat objective look at both sexes to help you make the best choice for you and your family. We'll start with some basic but essential biological facts that are often overlooked, especially with Ridgebacks, where most outstanding breeders will insist you delay spay or neuter until after sexual maturity. On one hand, that means you'll need to prepare for the challenges of having an intact male, a headstrong teenager with raging hormones who can often be the source or the target of social issues, human and canine. Here, you can see Zero attracts additional attention at the beach and also postures up with other intact males. Intense socialization is especially important for males, as is knowing their body language in order to help avoid and de-escalate any of these testosterone troubles. And yes, per our channel title, you can also expect plenty of marking behavior. Large males are also at higher risk of common issues in larger breeds, like bloat and musculoskeletal concerns. Nothing to worry about, just something to be aware of so you can keep your pup healthy throughout their life. But don't go and think you're getting off easy with the females, because right when they're at their most wild and energetic is when they're likely to have their first heat cycle. If you're going through the process for the first time, be aware that it essentially involves quarantining a feral creature for up to three weeks, while also attempting to keep a diaper on and prevent blood getting all over your house. It was unequivocally one of the most challenging things I've ever done. And unlike a simple neuter, a spay is a major surgery which requires extended recovery time as well. Be mentally prepared for these periods of restricted activity and you'll get through them with a bit more of your sanity intact than I did. Now that we've got those facts out of the way, we can happily dive into subjective generalizations and stereotypes. Though they may look tough, always have the well-earned reputation of being lovers, with sweeter and more affectionate attachment to their people, big or small. The boys believe lapdog is a state of mind rather than a size and will happily squish themselves on top of you rather than risk being apart. This is also what earns boys adjectives like needy and clingy and must watch you go to the bathroom. Okay, not sure that's an adjective, but as you can see, Zero clearly embodies this personality archetype to a T. And much like lions, when it comes to lion dogs, females are known as the business end of the breed. If you're hunting the king, you'll want one of these queens leading the pack. Matriarchal leadership is a common theme with the breed, and one I've seen hold true in a number of different settings. Most notably, of course, my own. Penny here is 60-ish pounds soaking wet, but she runs Zero's kitchen from top to bottom. We don't call her Mayhem because she's easygoing. She earned that name through her ferocity of spirit and purpose. This independence, confidence, and relentless nature are all typical hallmarks of the commanding females. Though, they're also quite loving in their own way. And I do mean their own way. Females love much as monarchs do, by gracing you with their presence and expecting devoted exaltation. If you're found lacking, a female will ensure your supplication by any means necessary. Females can seem above it all, but they're definitely not above keeping males in check. Hence Zero's head wrap here from a collision with Penny. Speaking of collisions, Ridgeback males are kind of like the old immovable object. They're stout, resolute, and powerful, which in turn makes females the matching unstoppable force. When the two meet, it's guaranteed to be a good show. Males have the muscle, and females have the motor. Across the board, Ridgebacks are some of the most athletic dogs around. But when it comes to endurance, the females hold an unquestionable edge. I've actually witnessed Penny run three male Ridgebacks into exhaustion consecutively, 
and then go look for another victim. If you want your Ridgeback to be an endurance running or hiking companion, I definitely recommend a female. At six and a half years old, Penny still has more juice than any dog I've ever met. Like most females, she's still got it, and she most definitely knows it. She doesn't need your approval or validation either. And like most males, Zero absolutely requires constant validation, for which Penny chides him. Many people come to the male versus female question as a simple matter of aesthetic preference. My dogs happen to represent opposite ends of the breed standard, so I'm often asked about finding a pup who will look like one or the other. Here, I'll repeat the ethical breeder mantra that you can't custom order a dog's look or personality. To illustrate that, take a look at this photo of Puppy Penny. Hard to tell it's her because her head shape is so much rounder than it ended up being. To get a better idea of what she'd look like, I knew it'd be helpful to take a look at her parents and their lines. But still, it's more art than science. You can see here how different Penny and her siblings all turned out as adults. When you first meet a litter, it's so overwhelming. Trying to suss out personalities is impossible when you can barely tell which dog is which in the pile. That's why I'm on my soapbox again about investing the time to find a diligent, ethical breeder who can guide you to the right pup. Watching Mary confidently wrangle this crew was such an instructive moment for me, and I knew I could fully trust her guidance. That's zero there in the orange collar, but it's not like we really had time for a one-on-one -on -one interview. It was Mary who, after investing time to learn about what I was looking for, matched him with me at the end of weeks and weeks of evaluation. So when it was time to bring him home, I knew the seed of his amicable personality. And very quickly, my brother-in-law learned Zero's love truly knows no boundaries. Even more instructive, I think, is the case of Penny, who was unbelievably relaxed and docile when I first met her. But trusting John's word, I prepared myself for a confident firebrand. And boy, was that putting it mildly. This is why when a breeder steers you away from a certain dog, you should absolutely trust their judgment. There's a lot to worry about when you're going to add a Ridgeback to the family. But I wouldn't add to that worry that there is only one right dog out there for you. Any Ridgeback you bring home is likely to be independent and energetic, requiring a lifetime of consistent, patient, but firm positive reinforcement training. What knowing the underlying disposition of your dog helps achieve is giving them the best motivation for that training. You'll find that in nearly all cases, Ridgebacks of both sexes are outstanding learners when treats are involved. Your dog will undoubtedly be loving, loyal, and follow you wherever you go. Gracefully, not guaranteed. And countless people can tell you that both dogs can be great with kids, provided all species get plenty of training and socialization along the way. If you're considering adding a second Ridgeback, don't worry, if you haven't yet, you will. Many of us love having opposite sex companions where the personalities tend to find natural equilibrium. That said, there are also plenty of happy same-sex pairs out there with great bonds too. In that case, you just need to be a little bit more selective about ensuring matching personality types. And in fact, you'll likely find nearly as many exceptions to all these rules as there are examples which prove them. My hope with this video isn't to offer a prescriptive definition of males and females, but rather a few common traits that you can be aware of in your search. My opinion is that the individual personality and disposition of a dog always trumps stereotypes, and a great breeder will be your best asset in leading you to the right pup. In the end, trust that the right dog for you is the dog you bring home. It's not something you can know ahead of time. It's the act of welcoming the puppy into your arms and heart that makes it true. 
If you have any questions about the anecdotal differences between male and female Rhodesian Ridgebacks, let me know in the comments below. And good luck on your search.